My name is Carol McCallum Shockness. I'm a native of Denver, Colorado. I grew up with two brothers and a sister. Mother, father, loving family, crazy family. Lots of fun, lots of music, lots of dramatics. So I was working at the Denver Weekly News. And then I, I think I went to the Denver Post and stayed there um, on nights, worked with Sandra Dillard. Um, went to the Rocky Mountain News. And then I think I went to Channel 7. That was my first TV job at Channel 7. They offered a nine month internship program for minority students. So I was one of those graduates. I worked at the Denver Post. I started my journalism career, actually. Cosmo Harris was my first employer. So from 72 to maybe for the rest of our lives, we stayed, we stayed in touch, basically. Um, but I was a photo, photojournalist for the Denver Weekly News. Did you do any writing for this? Yeah, a lot of writing, a lot of articles, a lot of pictures. You can't talk about media in Denver without mentioning Cosmo Harris and Dr. Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, Cosmo started as a radio man at KBPI back in the day when it was a country music station. Um, he ended up, he and Daddy O, um, I'm not sure of the, the entire story, but anyway, uh, KDKO became Daddy O's baby. And uh, Cosmo started venturing into the newspaper business at that time. So he started the Denver Weekly News and I guess I was his ace reporter on the spot. So we started a beautiful lifelong relationship and my first interview was with Lou Rawls. I had to go out to the warehouse. Cosmo, hey, Carol, we got this. Lou Rawls, oh, you know Lou Rawls? Yeah, I know Lou Rawls. You know, so go interview him. And so I was nervous, so I asked my older brother John to go with me. <laughs> so John went with me, you know, and we sat and talked, you know, when it came time for the interview. <laughs> Let's see. So my second interview was Diane Carroll. Yeah. So I still got nervous. I think my last interview was with Diane Reeves, and I was still a little nervous talking to my own girl. So you know, you prepare your questions, you you you, uh, you uh, research, you know, your subject, you find out what to do. And now with technology and the internet, it's, it's easier. But um, yeah, there's still a little bit. <laughs> I was walking down Colfax one day and I saw the Rocky Mountain newspaper building. And I said, well, let me go in here and see if I can get a job. So I walked in and, and um, I asked them if they had any openings. And I was talking with the city manager, um, or city editor. And so he asked me, well, what are the call stations to um, Channel 9? I said, ABC or whatever it was at the time. What are the call letters to CBS? I told him. What are the call letters to Channel 2? I told him. And he says, well, do you like uh, television? I said, yes. He says, well, we need an assistant editor for the TV dial. And Dusty Saunders is the editor, but he's out of town now. Um, so we'd like for you to just start Monday. And he'll meet you when he gets back. Okay. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So I was basically hired on the spot and started the next week, so I had to um, edit the, the TV listings for the Rocky Mountain newspaper. Mm -hmm. And then, too, um, Dusty was attending the premieres and the, the, new, um, the premieres of the new shows that were coming out in the fall, so mm -hmm. he had to go and you know, watch all the shows, so he called back and have at the time, he called back and had phone interviews or phone interviews with people out there and different types of things. But I remember Freddie Prince called me once, and uh, Dusty wasn't there, so I got to talk to Freddie Prince and you know take messages, things like that. So it was good. I, I felt like I was in the entertainment business. It was uh, I was the only black girl there. Pat Raybon was working there at the time. She ended up becoming a, um, a great author as well. Um, but she, I, George Lane, uh, I forget 
at who the illustrator, maybe it was George, no, George Lane was a reporter and there was a black illustrator there. So there were about four people in the newsroom. Um, but there was still some overt and covert racism mm -hmm. going on. Sexism as well. Sexism. No, that's when I moved to California. That was 1979. And um, I think a couple of years later, 81, I moved to Cal, 80 or 81, I moved to Los Angeles. So Pamela Lofton, who's a dancer, uh, she was dancing with Cleo. She was getting ready to go to school out there. So the two of us drove my car with the U-Haul back then and, and we made that move to LA. Ooh.